Hey guys, we are finally going to actually be doing a significance test today. So we're going to start with proportions, which is all about uh, categorical data. Yay! So proportions, categorical data, P's, P hats, Z, that's the world that we're living in right now. As soon as we start doing quantitative data, then we'll start looking at means. Um, so here we go. Um, so our SWBAT for today is being able to check conditions for carrying out a significance test for proportions and then also actually conduct um, a one or two sided significance test for a proportion. So yay, let's get going. Um, so we, um, I just wanted to show you this little um, diagram that I got from the book. It's kind of nice. Um, just so that you can see um, the different sides um, and kind of visually what we're going to be doing depending on what your alternative hypothesis is. So um, the first example is if your alternative hypothesis is P is greater than um, your null hypothesis, right? So you're trying to prove um, that the true proportion is greater than the claim. Um, the second one is if it's less than, P is less than P0, your null hypothesis. And then if you have a two-sided test, then it looks like this. Um, so um, basically you're just testing uh, the probability of getting your value or anything more extreme on both sides. Um, of the of the curve. So anyways, I just thought that was a nice little diagram just so for you to visually see that. Okay, so here's kind of your four step process for any significance test, not just for proportions. Um, you're always going to state your hypothesis, the significance level, the parameters that you're using, um, state your um, your null and alternative hypothesis, right? Which is <laughs> that first thing, okay? Um, planning is choose your appropriate method. So are you doing a Z test? Are you doing a T test? Um, is it a one-sided, a two-sided? Is it for proportions? Is it for means? So you wanna state that ahead of time just so that people know where you're going. Um, and then the do is you actually perform the calculations and find your p-value. And then um, you're going to have a test statistic, right? So um, depending on what scenario it is, you're either calculating Z or T. Uh, so your statistic minus parameter over the standard deviation of the statistic is what your test statistic is always going to be, okay? Um, it might be, you might have like um, an X bar and a mu, over the standard deviation um, of x bars, or maybe you have your p hats and you're subtracting p, p minus p hat. Oops, other way, p hat minus p, all over the standard deviation of the statistic, which is generally square root of p times one minus p over n, right? So depending on what you're doing, um, you know, your calculations are going to be different, but uh, the process is still the same. So then you find your p-value, and then you conclude in context, whether you reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it, um, and always in context interpret your results. And that's it. So the rest of the video is just going to be examples, um, just so that you can see this actually happening, and I'll show you how to do it on the calculator too. But on the test, and for your homework, whenever I say do the four-step process, you have to show your work. So even if you really like doing it in your calculator, you still have to do all of the work ahead of time. And then you can just check your answers with the calculator. Okay? Good deal. All right, so we're going back to the Dawson example. Um, so I just copy and pasted the old example. So basically we want to test if the true proportion of people of color at Dawson is um, similar to that of Colorado, which is uh, 30.6. Um, so uh, you got some new info here. 
um, because you decided to take a random sample um, of 50 students at Dawson and you find out that 12 of them identified with a race or ethnicity other than Caucasian and you want to check is this evidence statistically significant at an alpha level of 5% and then perhaps at a 1% at a significance level. Um, so first and foremost you gotta state what you're doing, what your hypotheses are, and all that stuff. So um, our null hypothesis is that the true proportion P is um, equal to 0.306, right, which is the Colorado proportion. And then our null hypothesis, we gen we think that Dawson is going to be, um, have a smaller proportion than that. So we're only going to check the lower end. So this is a one-sided test, and we'll make sure that we write that down as well. And <laughs> look what I found. Oh my god, it's pretty. Okay, anyways. Alright, so this is what my state looks like. I have my null hypothesis, my alternative hypothesis. I have my alpha level stated. Um, and I also state in context what the parameter is. P is the true proportion of students of color at Dawson. Um, and then I also stated what my statistic was. So P hat, which was 12 over 50, right? That was given to us. That was our sample statistic. Um, and that's 24%. Okay, so then we go into the planning, and all of your conditions are exactly the same as, condi um, as your confidence intervals. So um, random, normal, independent, um, are, and you're checking the exact same things. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So at some point you want to state something like uh, what, well, what you're going to be doing. So um, in this case we will be performing a one-sided z-test for proportions as long as our conditions are met. And then check your conditions. So um, is it, uh, was the uh, sample randomly selected? Yes, it was. Number two, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, would the sampling distribution be approximately normal? So then you want to check your n times p and n times 1 minus p. Um, again, again, because we're doing proportions, and so we have to check those particular conditions. Both of those are greater than 10, so we've got the normal condition good to go. And then last but not least, we have to check independence. Um, and so basically, is my sample large enough? Um, and since the sample was taken from the entire school of Dawson, uh, we can safely assume that there are more than 500 students at Dawson, I think. <laughs> Let's assume that. Um, I'm pretty sure that we do. I think there's like 700 or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, hopefully we have that uh, independent condition as well. Keep in mind you're doing all these conditions and all the calculations assuming the null hypothesis is true. Um, so you're doing everything with p uh, is 0.306. Okay, not your p hat yet. We just want to check what's the probability of getting a p hat that small. Um, so now we can do that. We can go on to the do step in our calculations. So since we've checked all of our conditions, we can safely say that the um, sampling distribution of p hat, given that p is actually 0.306, um, is going to be approximately normal. Um, so then we set that up and we just find our regular calculations. So here we go. Uh, all right, here's my sampling distribution for p hat. Um, I have mu sub p hat is 0 0.306, because we're assuming the null hypothesis is true. And then we find our sigma sub p hat, which is uh, p times 1 minus p over 50, um, taken, you know, rooted. Okay, and that ends up being 0 0.0652. So then we want to know what's the probability of getting something um, as small as what we found in our uh, statistic, right? which was 24%. Uh, What's the probability of getting that or anything more extreme? So here's where my 24% is. And we just want to find what that, um, what that probability is. So we want to know this area. And you just do that with normal CDF or, you know, however, or your table. Apparently it's sunny now. <laughs> um, sorry about that. But anyways, I guess I could just turn it a little bit. Um, so anyways, I found my uh, test statistic, which is Z, right, right there. <laughs> um, I found that to be negative 1.0123. And then we just want to find the probability that, um, that Z is less than negative 1.0123 on the standard normal curve. 
So I found my p-value to be 0.1557, so about 15%, um, which is actually pretty large. Um, so at a statistic, um, at an alpha level of 5% or 1%, or um, we still fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we do not have significant statistical evidence to prove that uh, Dawson has a different percent um, of people of color than Colorado, which is interesting. I was not expecting that. Anyways, so that's what you would conclude in context. So there's your conclusion. Make sure, again, that last sentence that I wrote there, that is the concluding in context. So you got to make sure that you have, if the problem's about Dawson, you should have something about Dawson in there. All right, so here's how you do it on your calculator. Go to stat, and then you want to check your test. There's my roommates. Hi! <laughs> um, and then <laughs> um, there's your z-test, t-test. We haven't done those yet, but we're doing proportions right now. So we're doing um, a one proportion z-test. Enter. And then you put in all of your info. So your null hypothesis is p0. And then x is how many, um, a n like the number of people you got, not the proportion. Um, it'll give you an error if you do the proportion. So we got 12 out of 50, and is your sample size. Um, and then you say, oh, I want a one-sided less than p0 um, test. And then I go and hit enter, go down, and I calculate and it gives me my z value, which is very similar to mine, my p value, which is 0.1556, so close enough, um, p hat is 0.24, and n is 50. And so your p value, this p here, that's the one that you're looking for to either uh, reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so the second example is a two-sided test. Um, we have, according to the CDC, 50% uh, of high school students have never smoked a cigarette. Um, a student kind of wonders whether the national result holds true for her high school. Um, so she took a simple random sample of 150 students. She gets responses from all of them, and 90 say they've never smoked a cigarette. What should she conclude? Give appropriate evidence to support your answer. So in this case, um, you're doing a two-sided test um, for, with proportions. Okay, so here's my state. Um, the only thing is they didn't give us an alpha level. When in doubt, 5% is pretty good. Um, so we're just going to say we're going to conduct this at a 5% alpha level, significance level. Next step is plan. Random, independent, and normal. And we check the same things that we checked before. Same thing. All right, so I checked all my conditions and they all were good. So um, we can check all of those off with uh, not an eraser, but uh, a <laughs> pencil. Um, and then next we do our do step, um, calculate everything that you need to calculate. So here's my sampling distribution for p hats. Um, my mu is 0.5, my sigma is 0.0408. Um, and then I want to know what's the probability of getting the proportion that I got from my sample, which is 60%, or anything more extreme. Now, when it's a two-tailed test, that's when things change a little bit. Everything else, you conclude exactly the same. The only thing is that when you find your proportion, right, so here I want to figure out what this probability is. Um, and a two-tailed test, you multiply that by two because you have two extremes, the upper extreme and then the absolute value negative, like the lower extreme, so this. So I find, let's find our p-value first. All right, so my shaded area, this blue region here, that turns out to be 0 0.0071, but because we chose to do a two-sided test, we got to multiply that by two because we have to assume... Um, that we're looking for the probability of both tails. So this is also 0 0.0071. And so the actual p-value is two times that. And since that is less than the R alpha level, we reject the null hypothesis. There's our conclusion in context, and then I'll show you how to show, do it on your calculator real quick. So we go to the same place, stat, then tests. We're still doing a one proportion z-test. Put in your stats. This is a not equals to, and then we calculate, and voila, same p-value.